Hello folks, welcome back. Our next video is just an extension of what we've been doing, kinematics equations and graphs. I have two problems that are both uh, different. This one's difficult because it's multiple problems. The other one is a new type of problem that I'm gonna to introduce today. And I wanna just show us what it would look like to use equations and graphs to represent the same motion. So I'll jump right in. Uh, a car coasts at three, uh, 6.3 meters per second for four seconds then encounters a hill where it accelerates at negative 1.4 meters per second until it comes to rest. Calculate the distance traveled by the car before coming to rest. So the given information is a little bit complicated. So 6.3 meters per second uh, is the initial velocity. The time is four seconds. And then after that four seconds is up, the acceleration is negative 1.4 meters per second squared. Uh, and we are looking for the distance or displacement. Um, and so that's our given information. But we can't use it the same way that we usually have because these things happen in sequence. Like first, we have a constant velocity for some amount of time, and then we have a constant acceleration until it comes to rest. We can actually add another variable, which is the final velocity is going to be zero because it says the car comes to rest. So I have to separate this into two separate problems. First is going to be uh, the constant velocity motion. And so I can say constant velocity. We haven't done this in a video, and it might have come up for you already. Uh, but you can use this kinematics equation for constant velocity. Constant velocity means no acceleration. And so this one half at squared term would cancel to zero because you'd put in zero for acceleration. Now I can solve final position equals initial position plus 6.3 meters per second times four seconds. Um, and so the displacement during constant velocity is a pretty easy thing to calculate, and this works out to be 25.2 meters. So now I want to worry about the constant acceleration portion. So that's already happened. The constant velocity, the, the car is coasted, and while it's coasting, it's traveling. And so that distance it travels is going to factor into the next calculation. Now constant acceleration... Uh, if I'm going to find distance, I, uh, I'm missing some information. I've already used the four seconds, and I can't use that again because I don't know how much time it takes for this car to stop. So my first mission is to find out uh, how much time it takes for this car to stop. So I'm going to use this kinematics equation to do that. Um, basically, if you tried to jump in with this kinematics equation, you wouldn't know how much time it would take to stop. Uh, and if you used other kinematics equations, actually, you know what? Scrap that. I have a better idea. Uh, you can use the third kinematics equation to figure out the distance it moves. So this is going to be V squared equals V naught squared plus 2A times displacement. Now, that mistake I just made is a really good lesson that a little bit of extra thinking can save you some time and, and mistakes in the world of kinematics. I was about to use two different equations to find the distance, but I'm just going to use this one because it has all of the variables that I need. So let's see how that works out. So final velocity is zero. Initial velocity, well, that was just the velocity while it was coasting. So 6.3 squared um, plus 2 times negative 1.4. That's the acceleration. And then the displacement, and this is where I can be a little clever also, this motion starts after the constant velocity motion. So I'm looking for the final position, and for my initial position, I'm going to use 25.2, because the acceleration begins once the car has traveled 25.2 meters. And so I can use that in my calculation. You don't have to. Uh, you can just use zero but then you have to add the two answers together. It's up to you. All right, so let's take this a little bit faster because uh, you've done some algebra before. So zero equals 39.69 
uh, minus 2.8 times x minus 25.2. Um, parentheses, you've learned your order of operations, and I'm going to tell you to kind of break that. Because the variable we're solving for is in the parentheses, I'm actually going to deal with what's outside of the parentheses first. Uh, in other words, I can subtract 39.69 from both sides, and that's equal to negative 2.8 times x minus 25.2. Now if I divide by negative 2.8, I don't need to distribute that into the parentheses. So if I divide by negative 2.8, I get 14.2, let's say, equals x minus 25.2. Now if I add that, uh, to the left side, add 25.2 to 14.2, I get a final position of 39.4 meters. And so that's how far uh, the car travels before coming to rest. Okay, now I said this was going to be about graphs also, so I just wanted to give you some opportunities to do some sketching. Um, I'm going to make uh, axes for position versus time. And I really just want you to remember uh, how the shapes would work. So there's two events in this problem. There's constant velocity for four seconds, and then there's constant acceleration until it comes to rest. So I'm gonna mark out four seconds on the graph, and my camera delayed. Um, so I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna make the transition there. So I'm going to just quickly map this out. Constant velocity for four seconds. I'm going to start at zero, and then I'm going to do constant velocity for four seconds, ending there. So really, I'm just focusing on what the shape should be. This shape should be a straight line, because that's constant velocity for four seconds. And then there's constant negative acceleration. So constant negative acceleration means that the velocity is going to get more negative. And so it's going to curve downward, and it's going to stop when the car comes to rest. Now, rest is a velocity of zero, and so my velo uh, position versus time graph is going to accelerate in the negative direction until the graph is flat. Now, I drew a kind of terrible curve, but that would be the last part of the motion, so uh, decelerating to a stop. Uh, I also want to do uh, velocity versus time. All the velocities were positive in this problem, so I can start there. Now I want to do the same concept, constant velocity for four seconds. So that's going to be four seconds. And constant velocity is going to be uh, a horizontal line for four seconds. And then constant acceleration until it comes to rest. Well, I'm just going to now uh, have a negative slope on my velocity graph uh, until the line reaches zero because that's coming to rest. So I just quickly wanted to show um, how you could represent this motion using motion graphs. Okay. Our second problem is one that is going to be like increasingly popular in this course because it's a big part of the AP exam. And that is what's called a derivation. And I'm going to do like kind of a, a soft opening here with derivation and not really give you a full lesson. We're going to pretend this is just a normal physics problem. Uh, a car at rest, V naught equals zero, is allowed to roll down a hill with an acceleration A. Okay, that's new. Acceleration equals capital A. Instead of giving you a number, I give you a symbol which means that this problem, the acceleration could be anything, but it is a positive value of A here, until it has rolled a distance D, so delta X equals capital D. Again, it's gone some distance. It could be any distance, but it's a distance D. Uh, derive an expression in terms of A and D for the car's final velocity, V. So we're going to pretend this is like a normal kinematics equation. Derive an expression means that my answer is going to be V equals, and then something. It says in terms of A and D, that means that A and D 
can be the, are the only two variables that can possibly appear on the right hand side. So I approach this like any other problem and I look at my variables and I have one kinematics equation that works. And so the way a derivation works is you pick a physics equation or two, you plug in the values that you have, and then you solve for the variable you're being asked to find. So the first thing I want to note is that V naught is zero. So V naught squared cancels to zero. So my next step is to write in the, the values that I'm given. So V squared equals two capital A times D because X minus X naught is displacement. And so D is the displacement. And then I solve. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And so my answer, my derived expression for the car's final velocity is the square root of 2 times the acceleration times the distance traveled. Um, and so we will talk a lot more about derivations throughout this course, but the, the like benefit of them is this doesn't just solve this problem. This solves any problem where something starts from rest, has an acceleration, and travels for some distance. And so we'll do more derivations uh, throughout the course.